you ready for a spaceship? <laughs> I have a 3D mouse, so I can spin it any direction I want. Anyway, this is the clock escapement marble gaze that I've been pouring my heart out to design in CAD last week. I'm very proud of this process and in this video I want to show you how this gate is designed and why. Before we're going to look closer at this clock escapement gate I want to show you I made my first interview in a very long time. When I was at ThinkerCon in Alabama I met this amazing artist Barnaby Dixon. Barnaby has just created Phil the Philosophish. Yeah, so when Phil invited me to philosophy fish I couldn't say no I haven't done an interview in a long time so Barnaby Dixon is like a maker musician and filmmaker like true renaissance person thanks Phil for having me on that was awesome this by the way is dab chick dab chick <laughs> is a crazy 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 bird you going to love dab chick so after you checked out the interview check out some dab chick episodes it's absolutely brilliant so the first decision I had to make in finalizing this design was to choose between this clock escapement and this micro gate, the pinball machine marble gate. And what I've decided is that I'm going to use something like this, but actually upside down and inside out <laughs> for the cyber base, because we don't have a lot of space there. But for the vibraphone and for the drums, we're gonna use the clock escapement gate. I made some major big design changes. First of all, I made this wheel twice as large. <laughs> so now this is eight centimeters across this wheel. And before it was only four. So you will really see the wheel on the machine. I love that. And here is the second big, big change. This is called a pallet and I made a full pallet. So if we look at a very early design here, if you check carefully, there's only one little peg on this pallet because the other peg was actually coming from the arm over here. So this peg would go in and block the wheel there. But in the new design, we're not doing it that way. We have a real clock escapement pallet. This is how it looks in a clock. Tick tock, tick tock. So the way this blue pallet here is controlled by the moving arm that will move back and forth is through a hidden link. There, I hid it under the wheel. What I'm so happy about with this is that, you know when you have a kitchen drawer with a soft close effect, you can like push the drawer and it never slams. It closes softly and silently. This whole design has a soft close effect built in. When the dropper arm open, the pallet will fall back and this link arm will push out. And when the dropper arm then falls back again, the spring inside the clock escapement marble gate will create a kind of a soft close effect, which will reduce the sound of the entire marble machine when the arms are closing. We had huge issues before with a like big bang when these arms are closing. And thanks to this design, I now have a tunable spring that can reduce that closing explosion and make it softer. So now I want to show you how I designed this from the middle and out. So this is the middle metal sheet and I've actually made small little cutouts here. That's because the curve of the water jet that is going to cut it has a 0.4 millimeter radius. And I want these 90 degree corners to be completely clean because it's gonna puzzle together with other parts. So now we can add the outside rail and there you can see the marble path is starting. So now when we have our train tracks, I've added the top rail. This is the rail that keeps the marbles from flying out. We have the two axles and I made them identical so you can just make the same kind of axle for both places. And they have these circlet clips, which means that we need to lathe a small little groove in these axles. So I need someone with a lathe, but more of that in the end of the video. I've designed the marble gear in two halves and there's an important reason for that because when I add the outside rail here, look what happens. This gear becomes locked in place and this rail is welded on. So by splitting the gear up in two halves, I will be able to assemble and disassemble this gear onto the axle after the welding has been done. Here you can see how the marble fit perfectly into this marble Gear. So next to the gear is the gear flange. That's also a PUM part, but as you can see, this is in one piece. Through this flange, I have three millimeter holes 
which is for M3 screws, and then they will screw in to these two millimeter holes. Let's continue the stack on this shaft and outside here comes of course the brass wheel. The brass wheel is connected with four M3 bolts here and then as I said at the very end we have the circlet clip there. On the back shaft we have the pallet. This is made in one piece from PUM Delrin. If I hide the gear you can see that we have a little tap here and this tap will move 10 degrees and hit this metal rail up there, creating a positive stop in one direction. In the other direction, we have another positive stop. So the pallet is designed to rock back and forth like this, 10 degrees. And it's really important when you design a pallet like this, that it doesn't want to pull the gear backwards. So if you check the interaction up here, you can see that the sliding movement is parallel with the gear teeth. So if I leave it in the other direction, minus 10 degrees, let's leave it there. Then you can see that this wheel is now free to rotate. It's rotating exactly 360 uh, divided on 16 degrees. Boom. So now you can see down here that this pallet is meeting up perfectly down here. So that's the tock. And then when the pallet goes back again, it's the tick. But how are we controlling the movement of the pallet with the hidden link? Now we're looking from the backside from inside the design. And as you can see here, the link is meeting the pallet and they go together with a bolt. And I'm actually double using this hex bolt to secure the spring. And the next solution will probably be source of controversy. I think I'm going to get quite some flack and rotten tomatoes for this because the spring tensioning system I've done is just a metal wire. I'm just going to fold it around the bolt. Why I love this idea is that it's basically the simplest possible solution. And if I want the spring to be a little tighter, I can just wrap the metal wire another round over the bolt and I have a very nice way to adjust the spring tension. Let's look at this blue arm here. This is the arm that swings out and in and is controlled by the programming of the music. So this is the weld point of the arm. This is the continuation of the arm. And this is to be able to adjust height. And here you can see again, I made this puzzle kind of design. So on that little piece, there we can weld the dropper itself. There is the dropper. If I zoom in close between the arm and the link you can see that they are not touching and that is because I'm not allowed metal on metal and more on that very soon. So we have the intro profile, let's isolate that. So this is another water jet cut profile. So here you can see how all the links fit into the profile and you can see that I've left a lot of room for it to fit in easily. And then I can just weld this from the outside. That should be a very, very simple weld job. So far, I've only showed you half the sides. And the cool thing with this design, it's symmetrical. So I can just mirror over to the other side and boom, we have the whole design. Now let's look a little bit on this aluminum clamp up here, because if we look from the top, we can see that the marbles are wider inside the PMA pipes. The marbles need to be guided in. And I designed this aluminum clamp to properly clamp on the PMA pipes, but also guide the marbles correctly. So if we isolate this aluminum clamp, you can see that we have some secrets going on inside it. Here you can see these strange looking flaps on the sides. They are crucial to make the marbles go into the rails 
correctly. So that's for the mechanical function. But I wanted to make this gate silent and I knew that the earlier clock escapement gate was kind of loud. It had a lot of metal on metal. So I decided to make a lot of experiments and then use what I found for inspiration for this design. Let's compare this noise with the overall machine noise. One noise is this lower marble falling into place on the metal. That little click. So let's just experiment with some tape and remove the metal on metal here. So before and after. Remarkably efficient. We remove the high end tick and we remain with a much lower low end duck which is much better. As you could hear, we still have a lot of noise from the marbles up here. It's coming from the marbles pushing up at the metal marble tracks. It's the cue, like this. So let's empty the gate. Tape here and on the top here. Okay, so this is proving that if we can remove the metal on metal, we are really on a good way. That's a cozy chuk, not this horrible tick, 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 tick. We have a third sound source that I'm not going to address now. It's this metal arm going against another metal arm. That sound. Here's an idea that I believe more in than what I think you will. <laughs> Pack up your rotten tomatoes. <laughs> you won't throw them today. The silicone is dry and... Well, I think this is one of the coolest routes. In this case, because I want so thin sticks, I'm not gonna pursue it. Okay, let's talk about some other chemical routes. This is what I had at home. The result is... Spray paint? Nah. Spray rubber, nah. Dip rubber, yes. Although this is super thick and hard to work with. So here is my next idea. Silicon pipe, cut it open and wrap it over the metal piece. U channel, that's already a pre-cut pipe. It's also called a grommet. This is shrink plastic for soldering. I made a test right here and that also works. I'm going to make a double coating here, see how that works. Sound test of double layer. Wow. That's brilliant. After all this testing, I've ordered and found two awesome products. Silicon tube in different sizes and transparent heat shrink. And this heat shrink is special because it shrinks four to one. So it becomes super small from a large diameter. I have this in different sizes. I have this in different sizes. And this is going to be the metal on metal sound killers from here on. So here you can see one example with silicon tube on metal. Here I have a silicon tube in a round bar. When the marbles roll of this, it's silent. <laughs> so here I'm going to fade out everything that is not silicon tubing and heat shrink. And as you can see, it's hidden absolutely everywhere in this design. For some reason in the beginning of the project, I wasn't designing for sound. <laughs> Should have done it earlier, but better late than never, right? I've gone all out in trying to actually make a responsible design here. I'm really proud of it, as you can tell. So now you can see how this blue metal arm bumps exactly up against the silicone tubing. I measured this thickness also on an eight millimeter thick uh, metal part. So there's no metal on metal pushing on this moving link. And here is a silicone tubing. And in this profile, you can see I'm using tabs to mechanically hold the silicone tubing. No glue mechanically held is always superior when you can do it.
all the metal parts are being water cut by Jeffer in Cleveland, Ohio, including these brass gears are water cut from one eighth inch thickness brass material. It's gonna look so cool. And aluminum clamp is being five axis milled machined in Sweden by RHDF. So that's gonna be shiny and cool, but I'm looking for help with the PUM parts and the axle parts. Maybe you can help me make them. I made a bill of material for this gate and I'm looking for uh, someone to make these items. So let's take a look. So the first batch is these PUM Delrin parts in black. I have advertised this on the new part manufacturing request channel on Discord. You can go to Discord and go to the part manufacturer and see what the info. What we want you to send us is uh, the materials cost, like the cost of your time and, and shipping cost, when you can deliver, which country you live in. And then we would like you to send this quote to Joanna at Vindegatan.net. I want to finish this machine. I would desperately want to finish this machine. And I've decided that I'm going to keep cutting all the missing parts. I'm going to start already now cutting the cyber base uh, marble gate. And while I'm designing, I want to send out more parts for manufacturing elsewhere. That is going to be the fastest way for me to finish this machine. There's so many pro makers out there watching these videos. So I think it's actually really cool. I stay designing, I stay working on the real bottlenecks of the project. Meanwhile, we can increase the efficiency by having you manufacturing the parts. And I can't think of a better way to use the funds that I've received from all the patrons and YouTube members to actually ask for help from professional people to help me finish this project. Imagine the vibraphone, cling, 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 and there's like tick, 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 tick. I mean, I realized that when I'm cadding, the best way for me to share this process is to actually make live streams. So I will do that more and more now. I have my studio set up for it. I have a drop shadow. I have the green screen. You didn't know there was a ladder behind me all the time, huh? <laughs> Look forward to some live streams soon. I'm gonna stay designing to finish this project and there will be more making and building once I get this part to France. So me and Wilson are signing off. Thanks to everyone who's supporting this crazy project through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Your support gives me an amazing freedom to fight uh, my heart out to actually finish this stupid <laughs> project. And thanks to you for watching all the way to the end. That warms my heart and it warms the heart of the clock escapement marble gate. See you soon.